All right. So we are going to, whoops, delete that. We are going to start with indicator five. We're still in indicator five. And we are going to be working with standard form day two. Indicator five. If you're at home, make sure you've got your three ring binder out. Make sure you are writing down all the steps, all the equations, all the examples. Um, we will be doing a note check soon. And so, of course, these notes, not only do they help you with your homework, but they get you points when we do a note check. All right, little bit of review. Standard form is a linear equation. And the standard form is AX plus BY equals C. And the A, the B, and the C are numbers. The X and the Y are generic X's and Y's that stand for every XY that stands for every XY on this line. So we've talked about linear equations, right? We've talked about how they are straight lines. So if we draw a line here, where's my line? All right, if we have a line graphed, okay, and we know that along this line, there are a bazillion points, right? They're coordinates. And each one of those has an X and a Y. Each one of these coordinates has an X and a Y all the way down, okay? This X and this Y stand in place of or stand in for every single coordinate point along this line. So they stay generic X and Y. And so as a little bit of a review, okay, we also have uh, Y equals MX plus B, right? That is slope-intercept form. And in slope-intercept form, you notice we still have a generic X and a generic Y. You always will in linear equations because you have to have something in the equation that stands for all the X's and Y's along that line. And with slope intercept form, you have an M and a B. And those are always going to be numbers that, and the number can be zero, right? It doesn't have to be, it can be a, it can be a fraction, it can be a zero, as long as it's a number, not a variable. And in standard form, the A, the B, and the C are always going to be some kind of number, and the X and the Y are going to stay generic X and Y. And then tomorrow, when we deal with point slope form, you'll notice in tomorrow's video, and I'll do a video just like this with the same whiteboard, with the same color coding, talking through it. Tomorrow during on our E-Day, you need to watch the video with your three ring binder in front of you, just like you would if you were in class. Take notes, do the examples, and then do the homework. And then um, on Thursday, both today and tomorrow's assignment is due, okay? But in tomorrow's assignment, when we do point slope form, you'll notice there's going to be a generic X and a generic Y as well that stay in X and Y in that form as well, okay? Now, we talked yesterday about some rules, and you don't have to write these down if you had them in yesterday's, but the first rule is just that it has to be in the right order, right, which is AX plus BY equals C, where the X, the AX comes first, then the BY, and then all the constants on the other side. The other rule was that the A could not be a negative. Okay, and we dealt with that in yesterday's homework. The other rule I said we would deal with today is that the A cannot be a fraction. So you're still going to solve these the same. You're still going to move everything around. You're still going to get it in AX plus BY equals C. But in today's homework, we're going to be dealing with getting rid of the fraction as well because the, fra the A can't be a fraction. All right, so for example number one, we've got Y equals negative one-half X plus three. And what form is this currently? Is this slope-intercept form? Yep, y equals mx plus b with our m being negative one-half and our b being positive three, right? But the instructions say get it to standard form. So this is what my end goal is. This right here is what I want to square as my answer, okay? So that means we got to do a little bit of moving. Now, typically fractions 
upset the cart a little bit. Students typically don't like dealing with fractions. So I usually make the first step getting rid of the fraction or close to the first step getting rid of the fraction. You can do it in any order you want. If you want to move the one half first, you can. If you want to get rid of the fraction first, you can. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the fraction first. So to do that, we know to get rid of a fraction, if I multiply by the denominator, and I'm going to kind of cheat here and just put this around the whole thing. But really what that means, and the reason I put it on both sides, is to remind myself that the 2 gets multiplied times the y, the 2 gets multiplied times my fraction, and the 2 gets multiplied times my 3. Right? If you do it to 1, you have to do it to all 3. So my... 2 times y is 2y. 2 times my, my x value, well, the whole purpose of this was to cancel out my bottom number. That ends up looking like an x. but So cancel that out, and you're left with negative 1x. And then 3 times 2 is positive 6. So now I've gotten rid of my fraction. Now I want to move my x value over. It's currently negative, so I'm going to go positive 1x and positive 1x, you don't have to write the 1. So that leaves me with x plus 2y equals 6. Am I in standard form? My x and my y are over here, my x doesn't have a fraction, and my x doesn't have a negative, so I'm good. Okay? So get rid of the fraction, move everything around, make sure that you are in the proper form. All right, so this is an example of when you start out, oops, example number two is when you start out in point slope form. And I think after tomorrow, this will be even more clear, but this is point slope form, okay? And before we do anything in math, we know we need to do what? We need to distribute or you can get rid of the fraction first, okay? I like to distribute first here only because, um, I don't know, it, it seems confusing if you get rid of the fraction at this point, but you can do that. You can multiply both sides by 2. You just have to remember to multiply the y and the 1 by 2, and then when you multiply this side by 2, your fraction goes away, and you're left with x minus 8. So either way it works, but I'm going to go ahead and distribute just because we're so used to just pounding it in that that's the first thing we do. I just kind of want to stay consistent. So y plus 1 equals 1 half times x is just 1 half x. 1 half times negative 8. Well, it's a positive times a negative, so I know my product is going to be negative. And then 1 half of 8 is 4. And if you're not sure about that, you can come out to the side and do 1 half times 8 over 1 you get 8 over 2, which reduces to 4, okay? And I know it's a negative 4 because it's 1 half times negative 8 and a negative times a positive. Now, before I really do anything, I'm going to combine a few things here. I'm going to minus my 1 from both sides. And once I get to slope-intercept form, which is y equals 1 half x, negative 4 and negative 1 is negative 5, now I'm back to where I was on that first example where it's just slope-intercept form. Now I'm going to get rid of my fraction, okay? And I'm going to do that, again, by multiplying by this denominator right here, right, by 2. So I'm going to multiply, and I write it on both sides just to remind myself to give it to everything. So 2y equals, well, the whole purpose of multiplying by the fraction is to get rid of that. So I'm left with 1x, or I'm just going to get lazy and write x. You don't have to write the 1. And then negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And now I'm still, right, my end goal is standard because that's what the instruction said was get it in standard form. I'm not in standard form yet. I need to subtract the x from both sides. And I get negative x plus 2y equals negative 10. Am I in standard form yet? Nope. I'm breaking the negative rule, right? So I need to get rid of that negative right there on that x. So if I do it to 1, just like when I multiplied by 2 in this step, in this step, when I, multi when I divide by 1, as long as I do it to everybody, I keep things fair, my x turns positive, my 2y goes negative, and my 10 goes positive. Everything changes signs. And now I'm in standard form. 
What's my A value here? Nope, it's a one. It's just not written there, but remember in front of every variable really is always a one. So if you're asked to identify what is the A value here, the A value is not X, it's the number in front of X. Okay, the B value is negative two, the C value is 10. Okay? All right, um, so for example number three, we're given a point of negative four, negative one, and we're given that the slope is three-fourths. Okay, and if our end game or our end goal, whoops, our end goal is AX plus BY equals C, we're not even close to having enough information to start there. We can't just plug in there. We don't even have enough information to write it in Y equals MX plus B yet, right? We need a B. So let's find our B. This is our given X and our given Y, so let's plug that into Y equals MX plus B, right? We're going to start here, and we're going to figure out what our B equals. So our Y, in this case, is negative 1. Our M is 3 fourths. Our X is negative 4, and I'm going to put negative 4 over 1 just because I'm multiplying it by the fraction, and sometimes that helps visualize what you're doing, plus B. Negative 1. 3 fourths times negative 4, well, this 4 and this 4 cross-reduce to 1s, so negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. And if you need to do that out to the side to give yourself a little bit of room to multiply fractions, that's okay. And then I'm going to add 3 and I'm going to add 3, and I get B equals negative 1 plus 3 is a positive 2. Now I've got another piece of the puzzle. I still don't have enough to start to go right to standard, but since I have an M and a B, right, I can write an equation in Y equals MX plus B form because now I have my M and I have my B. So Y equals, my M was given, it's 3 fourths, my x stays generic. Anytime I'm writing a linear form, my x and my y stay generic. And now I know my b is plus 2. So I'm in y equals mx plus b. At this point, I'm going to get rid of that fraction by multiplying by the denominator. And when I do that, 4 times y is just simply 4y. When I multiply my middle fraction by 4, my whole purpose was that 4 goes away, and I'm left with 3x. Don't lose that 3 on the top. The first two examples that we had, there was a 1 in the top, so you didn't have to write it. But there's a 3 in the top. That 3 does not go away. It stays with the x. And then 2 times 4 is positive 8. And then I'm going to subtract my 3x and subtract my 3x, and I get negative 3x plus 4y equals positive 8. I can't leave that negative hanging out there, so I'm going to divide, divide, divide. When I do to all, I do to all three. Or what I do to one, I do to all three. So that flips the sign of everything. My negative 3x turns positive. My positive 4y turns negative, And my positive 8 goes negative. And so there's my final answer. And when you compare it to written right above, right below it, right, AX plus BY equals C, I'm in standard form. That's my final squared answer. When you read your instructions on each section, when you, when you underline or put a circle around the fact that it says write it in standard, when you circle your final answer, you need to double check, am I with what the instructions say, right? Am I in standard form? Any questions on this one? All right, one more example, and on example four, we're given two points. We're given six, four, and we're given zero, negative one. Okay, those are our two points that we're given here. Now, you can't do anything in writing in a linear equation without a slope, so we're going to start there. Slope equals. And remember, this is my x1, my y1, my x2, and my y2. So I'm going to plug in to my slope formula. y2 minus y1 is negative 1 minus 4. x2 is 0 minus x1, which is 6. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. 
and 0 minus 6 is negative 6. Always clean this up. Don't leave two negatives. Two negatives make a positive. So in my given information up here, now I can fill in that I know my m is 5, 6. And of course we know you also are going to need a b. So I'm going to take my given slope and I'm going to find a b. Now, typically you would have to pick a given point, work the equation, and find your b. But in this one, do we know b? This is kind of a nice one. They give you a little hint here. What do they give you? When x is 0, what does that make that y? That makes it your b. My b is negative 1. I know it without any math equations because when x is 0, and it only works when x is 0, that is your b. And it saves you the work of finding your b. All right, so with an m and with a b, I can now write an equation in mx plus b. Y stays generic, I plug in my M. X stays generic, I plug in my B. Now that I'm in Y equals MX plus B, let's get rid of that fraction. Multiply both sides by the denominator of the X fraction. And when I do that, 6 times Y is just 6Y. Remember, the whole point of doing this is to knock out that bottom number with the x, leaving behind the 5. Don't lose your 5x. Don't lose your 5 here. Your, your numerator stays with the x. We just got rid of the denominator. And then 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. I subtract 5x from both sides, and I get negative 5x plus 6y equals negative 6. And again, I can't let that negative stand out front. So I'm going to all the way across the board to divide everything by negative 1, giving me my final answer of positive 5x minus 6y. Negative and a negative goes positive. So everything changed signs. And that's my standard form. If you hadn't been given that point up there, that 0, negative 1, if you hadn't been given that, you could have come over here, and you could have used this point right here, and you could have done 4 equals the slope of 5, 6 times 6 plus b. The 6s would have canceled out. And when you subtract 5 and subtract 5, you get b equals negative 1. So you still get b equals negative 1 if you do the math or if you just happen to catch the the give me the give me b okay all right so for today's assignment for online you need to click load load your standard form day 2 assignment show all of your work in cami and then submit it for those of you in class your assignment is on the back of day 1 so you'll work that i want to real quick address online and in class students so if everybody could give me your attention just for a second for tomorrow, I'm going to do a lesson just like today. I'm going to talk through it. I'm going to do the examples on this. This screen records everything that I do up here with your three ring binder. Still take the notes, still write out the examples. And then your assignment, if you want to do it on Cami, will be on Cami. You can load it and do all the work on Cami with the pen tool. Or in class students, I will pass out a paper copy if you prefer to work on a paper pencil copy in class okay and then everything both standard day two and slope or a point slope form which is what tomorrow's is both of those are due on thursday okay for in class students it's due at the beginning of class for online students it's due at 4 p.m all right and as always i'm here all day tomorrow if you have any questions please don't hesitate to email me i can do a video call real quick through google and we can do a video chat real quick or I can and then I can share my screen with you and we can like work the problem out together just like we would if you were in class or if it's just a quick question you shoot me a text or an email with a picture of what problem you're on I'll help you work it and I'll email it back to you if that answers your question great if it doesn't then we'll do a video chat okay all right let me end this video and then I'll pass out your assignment if you have any questions, if you're a virtual student, please don't hesitate to email me and let me know.